meeting to order. Um, I don't know, do we need to do a roll? Who's here? It would be nice to just tell people. Okay. So we have uh, in the room, we have uh, Andrew Gennatic, we have Mark Dunn, we have Justin Palan, and last but not least, we have Randy Eisen, the Honorable. And then on the uh, Zoom presence, we have, we also have Andrew, uh, but we have Deborah Levinson and... That's it. That's Cameron. it. Oh, that's the owl on the, no, there's on the left. Cameron. Who's Kim? Yeah, I, I don't know. Kim, did you comment. want to identify yourself, or is that someone on? Uh, I'm just coming to watch and observe. Oh, sure, absolutely. And actually, uh, as I recall, I think the first thing on our agenda was public comment. So, um, which was actually, uh, Andy Feiden came to our last meeting, and we... Tony, you mean? Oh, sorry, Tony, yes. And uh, we... Anthony, I said, I want to say Andy. Yeah, sorry. Um, and uh, and it, it was a good uh, wake up that we had not had any public attend, so we had not thought about um, putting that on the agenda. So we put him first, and so we thought we would do that again. Now, if we have anyone that wants to um, offer any public uh, in, input, feedback, questions, um but it sounds like Kim just wants to watch. So not seeing any other public attending, maybe some watching on YouTube, Hadley Media, whatever, but uh we'll go on to the next. Do you have the agenda yeah. that was drawn up? I think next was Kyle's report, the um resident survey summary report, which we just got half an hour ago. Okay. Mm -hmm. Sure, I did. You just sent it out. Uh, I skimmed it. Um, I think it's it's largely what we had discussed last week. There's okay. kind of a question by question summary of the responses, including you know breakdown by percentage of how those responses were kind of categorized, mm -hmm. you know for for against that sort of thing. Uh, nothing in here that jumped out at me, but there were a few notes about some of the comments that had said. Uh, you know, looking for more information, which I think we all kind of discussed is an important next step for the committee is to figure out what information do people need or make informed decisions and then how do we provide that information. And Most of that was in the smart growth impacts. Mm -hmm. And hopefully they'll come to some public event to ask questions and we can answer them then. I have to say, I, I can't really discuss the report because I I got it 15 minutes ago and I haven't had even time to read it, let alone, you know, consider it. So I, I wonder if we should postpone this discussion until the next meeting. I I would tend to agree with you because uh, I don't have the senior center Wi-Fi, so I can't even pull it in on my iPad. Um, so I haven't seen it either. Uh, that was one of the things that I um was the impetus or on the planning board was that we get things in with time to process them and uh um you know i understand he's pressed and he has a deadline but maybe we'll have to wait on that yeah that makes perfect sense there's no sense in discussing something we don't know what we're discussing the right. yeah. so next on the agenda was continuing next was uh the frequently asked questions oh. that i circulated People ask questions. Okay. Week, so, right. Mark. Yeah. Excuse me. Again, before we start this discussion, I had mentioned to you that I thought we needed to um, continue or just have closure on the conversation about the news report that came out on the survey um, and the process around that because it was it was unsettling. Um. Randy, I will turn to you. It's not on our agenda. Can we discuss that? We should not. We should not. No. It's but not we could put agenda. we could put that on the next agenda. Because if we discuss it in a public meeting and it was not on the agenda, we're yeah. Was there anything on the agenda that that could fall under? Well, I think under the cert the discussion of the survey and the question, you know, FAQs about the survey. Yes. 
I, you know, I think it's a follow, it's a follow up to the conversation we started last time about the survey and opinions about it and just disseminating information about it. Yeah, so it's, not, it's really a continuation broadly. of that larger conversation. Yeah, it's not broadly off subject. So uh, I'll defer to you guys, but the, um, the agenda item reads specifically, resident survey summary report, review draft summary report provided by PVCP, discussion on completeness of the survey report. So I don't you know the open meeting law stuff as well as you guys mm -hmm. do, if that's not clear enough. I don't think it is. I think we should wait on that as well. Okay. Put that on the next agenda so we can discuss. And I think that's what I wrote back to you that I was not sure that we could um, ramble off on that, especially, I mean, I don't know if it's, e even if we organically went there, I think we often stop because it's not on right. the, the agenda. Right. So to want to go there, um, I know you had asked if I could put it on the agenda, but it was too late because you need 48 hours notice. So um, I don't, it should have been on there anyway because it came up last week and um, we were told we couldn't discuss it on email. And so the only place to discuss it is here. And if, you know, so, and it's part of this whole conversation about the survey and how we're presenting information to the public. You're talking about the article that came out in the paper. Yes, I am. If I could offer, um, I don't know if this is on our agendas every week, but it says uh, item five is discussion on the next committee meeting, time and topics. So I think maybe we just make it a point to set the agenda for the next meeting that's, at the end of every meeting. Yeah, that's what we do on the planning board where, you know, I, I always defer to Bill Dwyer, who is the attorney. It's not that I don't want to talk about it. I do want to talk about it, but I don't want to get us into any position where we could be criticized for um, violating open meeting law, which... Yeah, it's, yeah. Not, it's not worth it, Deborah. It, it, I mean, there's stuff that comes up at select board meetings where people want to talk about it, and we have to stop and say, it's not on the agenda. We have to wait till it is on the agenda. So we're, let's make a note right now to put it on the next agenda. Item two, and, you know, public comment can be one. Item two can be this. And and it may seem arcane and just some legal thing, but if <laughs> if you talked about a project at my neighbor's house and it wasn't on the agenda, I'd be pissed. I would have come to that meeting if I had known you were going to talk about that and I would have shared my input. So that's, I think, where it stems from. Yes. Yes. I mean, that's not maybe the best example, but... Also not. It's, good. Yeah. it's a good one. So let's just be safe. Yeah. All right. Is that... Are you okay with that? I know it's not... Actually, I, I'm actually not. And I don't think it's the intention of open meeting law to shut down discussion of process, you know, internal committee process so that the committee can work in a trusting way among itself I think this happened last week. It it wasn't it hadn't happened when we had the last meeting, so it wasn't included in topics for next time. It happened during the week, and you know, it, to my mind, it should have. If it got shut down during the week, which it did, it should have been put on the agenda for this time. So I hear you, and I hear that we're not going to discuss it. But no, I'm not really okay with with all of that. And I would ask Kayla to duly note that so that you can feel heard and that you didn't agree but that as the chair i'm going to say that we will table that until the next meeting when it will be on the agenda all right um and that's good we don't want to always agree and be a rubber stamp so <laughs> um spice of life Let's uh, then move on to um, FAQs. Sure. Um, I am guessing that since we are going to discuss your draft, this will become public information. So I don't know. Is it on the agenda? Is his draft on the agenda? Or was it sent to us? FAQs. It, it was sent it's circulated. To us. It's identified on the agenda it's not attached so, so it's it qualifies as yeah. being out in the public domain yeah 
Yeah. So, um, and this item for, for info is review of draft FAQs and discussion on additions or revisions. And what we had said at the last meeting was that we would, you know, I welcomed everyone to draft up FAQs for us to discuss at this meeting. So, um, uh, I didn't have the time to get there. I, did you draft anything up? I mean, I saw what you did and I, like, well, I couldn't have touched that. Uh, it was very, I, I almost wanted to say, did you pull this out of like US News? And it, this was very professionally written better than I could have. So um, the only, you know, so I'll, I'll start jumping into this. This is a six page draft that one of our members has come up with. Um, I, we can either jump right into discussing this or I was gonna say we could come up with what were the issues that we felt most important to address and then see how, how this addresses them. Having seen the responses, um, the things that came to mind for me were um, people that said this was going to overload our schools. Uh, this was going to overload our infrastructure, uh, you know, in the town, sewer, water. Um, there were some questions about, is this aimed at, um, uh, I don't remember exactly the, adjectives that they use, but I would say immigrant, uh, you know, uh, uh, non-citizen housing or uh, someone I think maybe asked about migrant workers. Um, what are the other things that we... Unhoused. Want? Unhoused people. Mm -hmm. yeah, other things that we wanted to debunk. Um, yeah. These, I don't know if I have any questions right here, but I can rattle off what these these ones are, and if there are any we're missing, you make, make note of those first. Yeah, if you want to present yours, sure. Um, so the first one was uh, just why is housing access and affordability such a pressing issue? It's just the big picture. Why are we talking about this? Right. There were people that said, "Don't change Hadley. We're fine as we are." Right. right. Um, then there's why does Hadley need more housing? It's kind of tier two to that that topic. Um, Will new housing construction go to homeless populations? Although I, I realize I probably should have written unhome or unhoused. Is that is that how we're referring to them now? I, I uh, know. some people do. You know, you could do that. You might get called woke, but <laughs> I work at Smith, so that's how. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah, I wasn't sure if this was like a like a state level definition or something that I was missing, but uh, I think either will suffice. Okay, we'll move on. Uh, so yeah, the, the unhoused homeless population question: uh, Will new housing construction go to migrant populations? Uh, will new housing construction go to college student populations? What impact would new housing construction have on Hadley's school system? What impact would new new housing construction have on Hadley's property taxes? And those those were at least what I saw as the big themes, but um, there were others layered in there that just didn't seem to have as many responses tied to them. So I'm curious if y'all thought there was missing pieces that we need to fill in. Um. Anything that you would want to add to other FAQs or other comments that we should try to address, um, Deb? Uh, you're, Deb, you're, you're muted. You're muted. Um, De Deb, I I normally like to see people's um, you know camera. But you seem to be very kind of shaking. It's almost disturbing. If you wanted to turn your camera off and see if that gives you better bandwidth, because um, oh, it, it looks fine to me. But I I will do that if it's um, bothersome to you folks. But earlier you looked like a okay. That might sometimes increase the charter bandwidth. Yeah. yeah. So um, was there anything else that you? Um, I don't have anything just now. No, thanks. Okay. okay. Um, Andrew. Hi, no. Uh, you mentioned sewers earlier, which I didn't write about, but mm -hmm. I also don't have a lot of knowledge uh, other than the new issue with the sludge disposal. I, I haven't 
Right. I haven't been that involved. I don't know if somebody else might be able to speak to infrastructure in that way. The sewer capacity is more than we need right now. Uh, so, but at some point we can get to a place where it's not going to be, but we're, the town is working with Amherst to try to oh, that's right. divert some of our sewage to them. Uh, and if we were able to do that, that would increase our capacity tremendously. Uh, but that all remains to be seen. Um, and that has a bit of a geographic pumping issue. Yeah. Yeah. But that's certainly doable. Mm -hmm. Um, the, I mean, that, that, that typically comes up the, uh, police and fire demand will come into play. Um, it, it, we, we don't really know I mean, if, if this were to get built out a hundred percent of what we're proposing and yeah. we don't even know what we're proposing at this point in time, but it could add quite a bit, but any building I would assume would have to go before the planning board for site plan approval and all these issues that we're discussing would come up. So it's not like it's going to be a free for all uh, if we adopt 40R that every piece of property on Route 9 can get built up tomorrow. So there's there's lots of, of steps that have to be taken before anything gets built. Okay, so I wrote down add a section on uh, sewer infrastructure and then a section on police environment called services. Yeah, services, because that, that would address, um, I think some people might have said that that would, you know, bringing affordable housing would bring more crime. Um, that's, you know, that's a, I don't know if there are charts on that, but, you know, that's, that's a deeper discussion. Yeah, than than just numbers, right? I know. I know. Excuse me, I don't know how to break in because I can't raise my hand or anything. What What's the best way for me to do that? Just break in. Yeah. What the heck? Yeah. Um, do you want to Yeah. I did think it might be useful to have a question that um, distinguishes or explains what is, and I know there's a little bit of this in what Justin presented, but. Um, you know, what is what is affordable housing? How is it different from um, public housing? Um, you know, the the issue of it, that there's a percentage of affordable units, you know, in a in a development required in a development that it, they're not necessarily completely affordable. And then the difference between public and um, profit and nonprofit developers. Because I think all of that really does come into play. You know, who are the developers and what, what are these different definitions? Because I think a lot of the, um, you know, more concerning questions that came up have to do with stereotypes of low-income housing. Um, yeah, I think it's a, that's a great point, Deborah, and, and I'll, I'll add that the, I think that the disconnect you're talking about, I've seen that actually materialize in, in how we define affordable. And I forget the numbers, but like the AMI for this region is like $87,000 a year. So if you make under that, you would qualify for affordable housing. And that's area mean area uh, area mean, median income, median income, which is how Massachusetts sets the mm -hmm. threshold for your town's affordability based on your region. Mm -hmm. um, I may be getting that number wrong. Don't quote me on it, but mm -hmm. I think I think seeing that number and like what the rent price correlates to probably help people understand this isn't. You know, we're not we're not talking Section Eight voucher housing. We're talking you know true workforce housing, and maybe that helps put it in perspective. Well, that, maybe. Well, it may be Section 8 housing, though. Section 8 vouchers are intended to allow people to move into affordable housing. Right. So, it wouldn't preclude that. Yeah, I guess what I'm trying to So say, I think you have to be, you different. know, straightforward and clear about these different areas, you know, what this really all means. And I'm not even sure what it means with 40R versus if we, you know, if we use 40R or if we don't, um, you know, are those guidelines going to be different? For us, yeah, and, and, if we and if we have a for-profit versus a non non-for-profit developers that we work with, you know, like with the Econolodge 
project, the intention was to allow, um, you know, lower lower income folks to come in, and presumably that would be allowed under 40 R2, though not required, is my understanding. But I, I think it would be helpful just to sort that all out. Yeah, I'll put an add section on 40 R and like what is 40 R and smart growth. I realize we didn't answer that. Okay. Yeah. And I don't and I don't want people to think that this is 40 R is, is all that we're we're driving at. That's one of the options on the table. Right, right. We're just, we're trying to decide if that's appropriate for the town. Right. I mean, you know, we could come up with you know a plan that says we think 40R would make sense here, but uh, something else over there, you know, um, you know, multiple unit, you know, per parcel over here, 40R over there, you know, we could come up with different areas. Um, mm -hmm. It might not just be, you know, I, I think one of the fears I heard, and that was, I'm not sure I heard it in this, maybe there was one, or two responses, but I remember before we got into this, um, on the planning board, I heard fear that there would just be Route Nine would be this big zone. You know, there was a, there was, what the state came back with, you could do this, and my fellow members, some of them felt like, is this what they're going to force down our throat? Like, no, they're not going to no. They're just saying we would love it if you just made this whole swath, you know, and then you just you know your mind runs away with, why? Wow, how many apartment buildings could you build there? Whether it's actually economically desirable for a developer or not, but you can imagine, oh my God, you know. Mm -hmm. So, do we want to lump uh, traffic in with the ambition, like sewer and water? It's a good question. I don't really know how to speak to traffic because yeah. the current state of traffic is just so yeah. disturbed by the construction activities. Yeah. I yeah. don't know how to get to a baseline. Yeah, mm -hmm. well, I mean, that just is a, a function of, of numbers. If you know, we have X cars today, and if 40R were to come into play and we have so many units available, then that's X plus Y. That's what the future traffic is going to be. I mean, it's obvious that it would increase the traffic, but to what extent, we don't know at this point. Right. And the intent is also to enable, like putting it along transit lines is to enable housing without the cost of the car. You know, if you're, you know, you can't, if your income exceeds having housing, feeding your kids, and having a car, then maybe one of these units makes sense, and you do zip car when you need to go. These are the kind of things we'd like to empower. In the bus, we have the bus, there's numerous bus stops along yeah. Russell Street right now. and So that, you know, my point is that a study might say you're going to add so many units, they would they would assume a certain number of cars per unit, but it could be less. Right. So, does anybody have any sense for what a traffic impact study costs? Because I get them done all the time, but I don't pay for them. So, <laughs> <laughs> I don't. It's got to be tens of thousands of dollars. And that's probably further down the road until we have something to actually study. Yeah. And I feel like most of the concerns, like I don't want to speak for the, the responses, but I think most of them are concerned with spillover from Route 9 into the mm -hmm. more residential roads. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. That makes sense. It's fair. You're enough for that now. Yeah. yeah, especially when they pave uh, sections of the road. <laughs> okay, so we have a few new sections we'll have to flesh out. And yeah. uh, I, I would request help if, uh, if anybody wants to take anyone that they're more savvy in. Um, we can we can figure that out at the end. But. Well, I've, I've been interested in knowing more about our sewer system, so I might reach out to Scott and you know, see if I can set up a time to sit down with him and have him explain where our mains and where our capacity, because it's it's something that as a planning board member I've wanted to know and I just haven't had the opportunity. Mm -hmm. So I will take on uh, 
infrastructure and lease in terms of sewer and water. Okay. Because then, you know, I know for someone like Joe Zagranik, who has been doing this for 30 some odd years, he knows in the back of his head exactly what line ends where. And, you know, because you know, he's had cases where, nope, you're going to have to be on sewer. Um, he's got the empirical experience in his, his head. Uh, so I'll take that on. Okay. I also had an interesting, in my conversation, um, uh, I'll share with the meeting for anyone watching, because I, I did send out in an email that I had met, um, it was Monday, last Monday, uh, so last Friday. Last Friday, I, I met with Dr. McKenzie um, about the schools. And a lot of what, you know, actually what you put in here uh, better synthesizes what I could have taken away. My my head exploded when she <laughs> when she went into how complicated it was and she took me into chapter 70 and chapter you know, and the cherry sheets and this and that and and that it's not one of my takeaways was it it's not just one you'll make more money if you do this because then every town will try and do, do that. But as you pointed out in there the um, the schools would get more money from the state if we get money for um, school choice, but we could get more for um, local, I think she calls them foundational, foundational if, they, if they're Hadley residents. And something else that we touched on was um, debunking the myth that uh, crime is indirectly proportional to uh, household income. She, you know, didn't want to name any names. She said, I, I could give you a number of examples where I have more, you know, if they think that it's going to cause our faculty more headaches because it's low-income kids and their troubles and all that, she said, there's just as many cases of the kids that come from an affluent house causing my... <laughs> So I just laughed and said, well, there's Ferris Bueller playing. <laughs> so anyway. Okay. Um, the other topics we have to flesh out more are fire and or well, services, police and fire, uh, affordable housing. I can take that, uh, unless somebody is particularly interested. Well, I think the I think the police and fire is, is going to be again a, a function of numbers. Um that's typically what I've heard in the past, you know, you get a hundred new residents and you might get 10 more calls a week or whatever. So right. but there's an argument to be made or not to be made. There's an argument to be had about which type of housing you bring in and what that correlates to in terms of services where like say senior housing you might have more medical service needs. Right. Student housing you might have more police calls and right. you know understanding how we choose to develop or you know assign these these types of zones could help to mm -hmm. offset some of those yeah. costs and and i just i believe that i don't care if you make ten dollars or ten million dollars you can be the same kind of person so we we can't label anybody mm -hmm. based on their income and i that's what is happening with some of the survey responses yeah. um so we just have to understand that anybody can be a nice person and anybody can be a not so nice person. And you don't know what you're going to get till you get it. And there's an argument that the bad actors at the bottom of the income scale don't have the funds to hide. So there's get prosecuted and those at the higher end, it gets swept away or an attorney or anything else. So yeah. So the perception it's not always in line with reality. Right. Um, Randy, would you like to volunteer then or draft up the police and fire section? Or at least find, I mean, I can help write it if, if, yeah. if people can help me find the information. The Wasn't data. there a recent, I feel like, I, I mean, I could work on the police and fire. Sure, sure. Yeah. Um, I'm going to be traveling, so I got to just like, 
Yeah, yeah, didn't. As I recall, Mike Mason made some clear yeah. statements about that when the Econolodge issue was in the public eye. Exactly. Um, I can't remember what, what the venue was, but he, I recently heard him say that there weren't that much of a ticket or it was normal, right. you know. He was not he was not concerned about it from a public safety perspective. And so he may be a good person to, you know, consult on this. Yeah, because he had hard numbers. Yeah, you know, reach out. Yeah. Yeah, something's already made and at least let's see it. Yeah. I'm sure he'd be happy to talk to you with all his spare time as well as different roles he's playing right now. <laughs> Uh, I'm also happy to assign myself the what is 40R and smart growth section, unless somebody else would prefer to write that. No, that would be great if you would. Uh, and then the last one we haven't assigned is uh, traffic. And I I have no idea how to even approach that one. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I I, that's going to be more broad brush. Yeah, I think we kind of wait on that. And, and that's going to be site specific, if you will. Yeah. Maybe that, maybe that comes after we establish a boundary, yeah. a potential recommendation, yeah. and we start to think critically about what that impact is. I think yeah. that makes sense because, you know, if we end up, you know, we're talking about this and we end up with this, it's a whole different traffic equation. So I think we should wait on that. I agree. I only brought it up because it was a high yeah. mm -hmm. sure. response. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, if, if when we get to the, I forget what we're, I keep calling them post focus groups. I forget where we landed on the name of it, but small groups or something. Like yeah, that. Like group. breakout sessions or something. Whenever we get there, maybe the you know the response about traffic is just like obviously right now traffic is not normal. Right? Mm -hmm. Route nine construction has thrown a wrench in that works, so and yeah. we have to wait until that concludes to really understand what opportunities and constraints we have. And, and, and something that we really have to keep at the forefront is no matter what we do. There's going to be people who disagree vehemently about any of this, and we're not going to be able to appease everybody. So we just have to have the facts and explain them and let the people decide if we get to that point where we've decided that it makes sense for us to move forward and to go that far with it. Okay. Um, so then with that, I don't know if there's, if we want to have discussion item by item on the ones that we've already fleshed out a little bit here. Um, yeah, I, I didn't have any criticisms to speak of, but maybe somebody else. Yeah, my, my primary concern, and I think I said this when I circulated, is just I want to make sure, first and foremost, the sources that we're citing are fair and reasonable and that, you know, we're not cherry picking information to suit an agenda. So I think it's very clear the public trust is not 100% there yet. So I want to make sure we're putting our best foot forward. Um, but then I've also tried to, you know, what I, what I wrote in here, I was trying to phrase it in a way that was avoiding inflammatory subjects and trying, trying not to engage in that side of things, but just fact-based. Here's what we know. This is why we're making decisions. Um, so to that end, if there's, if anybody found an issue with any of the sources or if there's another source that maybe counteracts some of the information in here that we should identify and address. I'm happy to take a look at that. Okay, again. Yeah, my, mine are not about sources, but there's one sort of presentation issue that I want to bring up. Sure. So the question with homeless populations and with migrant populations both begin with, in short, no. New construction will not go to these populations. And then for the, um, you know, will it go to student populations? It's a more nuanced response. Um, will new construction go to college student populations and says there's no mechanism that could explicitly prohibit a specific population from renting or owning property. So it's possible that some units could be occupied, et cetera, et cetera. Right. I think that's true of each of these populations. And I, I, I don't like the terseness of starting either of those other two with in short, no. I mean, of course we can have migrant folks renting or, you know, or buying, I, I'm not sure if it's all rental or not, but of course 
migrant folks can rent new housing. And and especially because there's a, you know, you, you go into some detail about the definition of homeless and that you give a rather broad um, presentation about homelessness. Of course, some of those people may may rent new new housing. They may have vouchers. They may, who knows? So I think it's not accurate and I think it's um, not good presentation. In any case, I'm suggesting to get rid of in short, no, for both of those and to adopt more of the language that is used for the student populations, you know, more, more discussion. Um, thank you, Deb. If I could, if anyone else were going to jump in, I did have a thought that that kind of dovetails with. <clears throat> so as an architect, I do almost every day, and I've got the building code over. And I can buy the building code, or I get the building code and commentary. And I really like building code and commentary, because you have this very dry, this is the code. And then in aster, you know, then in uh, italics under it is like a summation and, and examples. And it makes it, you know, you're like, what does that mean when you're reading all that? And then this really makes it. So I was thinking maybe we could do it the other way and start with like the italics. But here's a summary. And then here's the backup. Because a lot of your stuff is, like I said, it's really professional. It's really, it's got all that. Maybe there's a summary paragraph instead of a summary word. It's in, in order to know. But maybe we can, you know, if somebody wants to just skim through it, like let's say we, I don't know, I don't know if we've talked about how we would distribute these. You know, we like to get them online so everybody can get them, but there might be places where we put them out. Or if maybe we're on the table at town meeting, you know. Mm -hmm. um, some people might just skim through and then they could just read the, the summary. And if they agree or disagree, they might want to get into the depth. You know, almost like like having a hot link, you know, to get into the backdrop. Okay. So I, I would, I'm thinking maybe that would address Deb's concern that we have a more nuanced um, you know, give it a few sentences mm -hmm. to summarize. Yeah, I think to Deb's point, the the various groups that she mentioned, the preamble, if you will, should all be the same because we yeah. can't differentiate. Right. So the other, other than saying this is over 55 housing, that's the only one that I'm aware of right. that we can say, you know. And, and I also... I thank you. I agree with that. And I also think that we should not assume that these are populations that nobody wants to have in town. You know, there are people and there are people who responded to the survey who would like to have more affordable housing, who would like to accommodate migrant folks. And, you know, um, so there's a little bit of a tone of appeasement here, you know, like, don't worry, we're not going to have any of these kinds of people here. And it's, first of all, it's not true. It's not true. Those people may may be part of it, and it's also not true that every that would, you know, be opposed by everyone. But either way, it, you know, we can't legislate it, and we can't assume it. Agreed. Yeah, I don't think we want to. I don't think we want the FAQs to come out as people feeling that we've sugarcoated. And we're trying to appease. We just want to take facts and say, you know, this is a question that, that came up. Here's here's the here's the truth behind it. And the truth may not be black and white, but these are the shades of gray that are more accurate. No. Does that all makes sense. Uh, shouldn't be too hard just to reword some of this, mm -hmm. but I, I like Mark your idea of having I don't know, in my head I'm calling an executive summary for each question, but mm -hmm. like just a you know quick digest of what the answer is. Yeah. And then hey, if you don't believe that or you want more info, right. there's a paragraph or two. Yeah. Um, I think that makes makes it a lot more digestible. And to your point, Deborah um, agreed we can we can try to make the language more consistent, but I, I, I realized what I had done when I wrote in short no, I was reacting to the comments, not my question that I had written. I wrote these questions after I wrote the paragraphs. Yeah. Um, and 
in the comments, it was, you know, I don't want this to go to illegals or migrants or, and so I was just like, no, that's not, that's not what we're doing, right. but realized the question is different than what was being stated. So I think some re rephrasing and uh, restructuring will go a long way. Yeah. Okay. Uh, do we want to dive into any one of these in more detail? Um, why does Hadley need more housing? <laughs> um, yeah. I mean, there are different ways you could go with that. You know, <clears throat> I don't know if that's a, it's a separate topic, but there are people that are going to fear that the state's going to push it on us. Or, I mean, obviously, the state is pushing, like, the uh, <clears throat> ADUs on us, the accessory dwelling units. So there is a fear of Big Brother. So that's another argument that maybe goes in here is that History shows that the towns that say no get something they may not like occasionally pushed down their throat. And I'm thinking of the some of the Boston suburbs. Um, so if we craft something that works for us as a community, it may also act as a... Uh, you know, defer, drop us down the list of the state's targets. Like, oh, these towns are not playing ball. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. I mean, the, the 40R at some point could turn into a similar situation to what 40B is now. If you don't have, meet certain criteria, then we're going to just allow developers to come in and, and do whatever they want to do. And it's something that I think is really important to note, whether it's Hadley or any place in the country or the world. Every day, the population increases. And people need a place to live. So if every community decided we don't want any new people in our town, where do they go? Is there a hole somewhere out in the middle of nowhere that they get put? I mean, it's just not... If, doesn't sound anything like fair and reasonable. We're all here, but we weren't here before. And we had to, somebody had to make space for us. And then we get to a point where some of us will say, well, that's enough. I'm here, hooray for me, and nobody else matters. Thank you for having the door open for me, but now close the door. Exactly. And that is really a sad situation in my mind. But it's not uncommon. No, it's it's the way of the world. Oh, it's, and it's, it's been documented in South Florida with the, the Hispanic culture. We're here, that's enough, you know. Don't make our pie shrink anymore, mm -hmm. you know. Yes. So I think that's really true, and it's why the tone of our work is so important, I think and to take a positive tone. And I think we might say about 40R, for example, that the state is um, you know, offering incentives because this is such a broad problem and it's a you know, broad and significant problem rather than the tone of they're pushing it down our throats. It's like they're encouraging communities to, to, to take this initiative on our own because we share in this problem. We are part of the state as well as being part of Hadley and being part of the region and the, you know, the county and so on. Um, so I think, I think staying on that, staying with the tone of why it's a positive step for us and how the state is encouraging us, they are offering certain financial incentives if we, to do this, you know, it's, it's to help solve a problem that we are all facing. So I, I, I myself would like us to stay away from that idea of threat and the state as a sort of a boogeyman coming after us. I don't see it that way, and I, I don't think it's a helpful way to frame it. 
Okay. Are you are you um, aware of the accessible dwelling unit? Yes. Issue. I am. Yeah. I am. Yeah. And I don't know how everyone feels about it. Certainly, there's probably a lot of mixed feelings about it, but I actually think it's a, a good thing. And it seems as though there's room for, for towns to adapt it to make it work as well as possible in each town and to see that you have the, you know, the supports to make it work. So there's, you know, there's a, again, an incentive or there's an edict, there's a, there's a law that it, that it, that it be legal, but there's also the flexibility for towns to shape that to make it work locally. That's my understanding. Some extent, right. Yeah. I think and that's I, the and I think it's a good thing for housing. I think it's, I think it's, I happen to agree with it. Yeah, I, th I think that you're right, Deborah. I, I agree with you there. I, I think the bigger thing from the act that most people seem not to know is that it changed zoning uh, amendments from a two thirds vote to a simple majority. So towns can enact zoning amendments with fewer yay votes. So I, I think I think that was probably the it's going to have the bigger impact to push change through where otherwise you know if you didn't have fifty one percent or uh, whatever was seventy sixty seven percent yeah so mm -hmm. you, you wouldn't yeah. make it. Right, that's a good point. But I agree on the positive tone, and I think you're right. Like the state's trying to use the carrot, not the stick. But you know, to the extent that we can be a part of the solution, you know, eventually, if we do nothing, we might not have a choice in what the solution is. So that's the opportunity that we face. Yeah. Does anybody else want to dive into anything else? I, I don't want to be the, the chair that leads. I'd rather be the <laughs> chair that governs. So I'd rather have you all jump, you, you've jump got, in. You've got the list there. So if you want to go read item by item, and we can say, let's talk about it. Why don't you? And I've I've got it on. I've got it here. That's that's so a paper version of this. The, that's the chair that passes the ball. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be curious to hear if anybody was surprised by the tax section. So that's one that I've been a message that I've been trying to communicate for a while that I think a lot of people just don't have a great understanding of is like how our tax base is actually generated. Yeah. No, the options taxes was yeah. Yeah, and I don't know if maybe some people thought that there's mm, more taxes from commercial establishments and that you wouldn't get taxes from a housing complex. So that was good to put that in there. Yeah, so I mean, that, that question happens to be on top of the list I just was handed. Mm -hmm. And I mean, if we're gonna get into that, we should get somebody from town hall to come in and discuss it at our Open yeah. sessions or whatever we're calling them. Yeah. So I mean, that's certainly uh, something that people need to understand. To Mark's point, uh, just because it's housing doesn't mean it's tax exempt. It certainly everybody pays taxes, whether it's commercial or residential, based on the appraised value, as far as I understand it. And uh, the tax rate is the same. Or commercial and residential. So, if I have a house that's worth five hundred thousand dollars, and I have a business that's worth five hundred thousand dollars, my taxes are going to be the same. So, uh, the, I think the big issue comes when we get new students, and then that's a huge burden on the school system because typically, as I understand that. A student costs more to educate than their household will pay in taxes. So that's a, always a big concern. And again, we won't know how that plays out until we get new people in town. So I can't speak for how development would go in Hadley, but in my experience doing multifamily across the country, there's more dogs than children in those buildings. Mm -hmm. It's a lot more. 
Yeah, and I think I heard something recently where the you know the population is starting to slow down a little bit, at least in this country. But I don't know if that's reality or not. There's talk of an enrollment cliff at the younger end of you know, yeah the universities. Like, so. Yeah, but you're um the the data you gave was the twenty five to thirty five. I think. Yeah, I just yeah. pulled that from the census data. Mm -hmm. And that, I mean, that first page, that's how housing affordability and access issues were explained to me a long time ago. And it's something that like, it's always in my head. When you look at these two graphs and you see from 2000, we all experienced 2007, 8, 9, that crash, which is horrible. When you see these two things together, you realize, oh, okay, there's the gap. Like, that's why we don't have housing. Yeah. So just going through this list and looking at it, you know, will new housing construction go to homeless, migrant, college student populations. I just think that, you know, where will the housing go rather than will it go to these particular populations, quote unquote, uh, because again, we don't know where, where, who's going to come into town and, and be able to afford our affordable housing. Uh, so I mean, I understand the concern of the people that responded to these particular issues. And I'm sure that they're concerned, you know, they're the ones that say Hadley is, we're good. We don't want anybody else in here, especially uh, people that they think are going to cause problems in town. But again, we don't know who's going to do what. So, I think that's pretty much all the questions that are. On this. You know, Randy, that raises, I think, maybe a good possibility of just of um, maybe organizing the questions just a little bit differently, like who who will who will this housing be for or something, and it is sort of embedded, and I think you know what what Justin's writ written. But I wonder if it might be helpful to highlight that as the question. You know, who who will take who will be able to take advantage of this new housing or whatever, and then sort of has have as subheadings. You know, they're they're about these subpopulations or these different populations. But to be able to focus on the idea that it's intended to respond to the issues that have been brought up. In the first two questions, why do we need housing, and why does Hadley need housing? And so, you know, th this housing is intended to serve these these groups, and include and will also include lower income and immigrant folks or whatever. Um, but that the intention is not to focus on specific uh, demographic. I don't know. How, I don't know how you would say it, but I mean, I think it's all here anyway. I'm just. As Randy was talking, I was wondering if, if arranging it more that way might be more in keeping with the sort of mission of the project. I don't know. I think that makes sense. Starting like again with a positive tone, starting with, you know, who is this for? Why are we doing this? Seniors don't have a place to downsize, young families don't have a place to you know, start their lives. Like that, those are the questions we're, or the issues we're trying to address, not, you know, how can we build as many shelters as possible? Like it, it's serving right. every, our population, not, not a specific population. And anybody that has kids in this town that want them to be able to continue to live here and not have their parents pay their rent have to realize that, you know, 1,800, 2,000, 2,200 bucks a month for a one bedroom apartment is a lot of money. And I mean, I have a, a young daughter that is barely scraping by. Fortunately, she's able to stay in town, but she got really lucky. So. Supply and demand. Mm hmm Yeah, exactly. Supply and demand. And if we can get a little bit more supply, then maybe that can have an impact on the, 
the costs. And I'm like, somewhere tossing the, that, as we said, to all three of those that you addressed, the, the immigrant, the homeless, the student, we can't regulate those, but we can incentivize. You know, if we wanted to, you know, incentivize students, probably the closer, the further east would be maybe more desirable or near the mall. They might like that with the, um, uh, you know, if we wanted to incentivize, um, or they might like the, the mixed use, you know, which we haven't looked at where that would go. But uh, that writing you did that, that was a very strong, you know, those, that data was a very strong argument for that. How that, was that under your taxes answer? Uh, I think under the student one, I talked a little bit about the regional economy. Because the mixed housing, if you, you talked about how that, that gets more activity more oh. more foot traffic at the uh, at the retail, which you know, you know. Is, isn't the whole idea behind this forty R is to to have mixed use, not yeah. just yeah. residential. Yeah, yeah, and and higher density, but yeah. walkable communities is the yeah. way it's described. Yeah. and the and what what I was taking from that is that the mixed use supports the local businesses so that maybe they don't they are not scraping by mm -hmm. they can become you know something that's here for 10 20 yeah 30 years. i mean i've got a prime example of that the barbecue on route nine wildwood barbecue that's my property i don't own the barbecue but they're building a new motel right next door and in the construction process his his uh, revenues have gone up once the motel is in the operation, people are going to be able to walk out the door, walk across, yep. and go to that business. So it's no different than what we're talking about with the mixed use. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm just I'm a little curious to see how the world is going to be in terms of needs for a commercial space mm -hmm. uh, as as technology continues to advance. Mm -hmm. There's going to be certain things that we can't get on the internet, but I don't know how many <laughs> there. You know, what's the limit? Well, there's, uh, I don't know how many restaurants Amherst has. I know that Northampton used to have like, like 60. Mm -hmm. We used to say, you know, year, decades ago when I rented in Northampton, we used to say you could eat at a different restaurant every night and you you, you wouldn't repeat for months. You know? Yeah. So yeah. We we'll sadly have that opportunity. Yeah, sure. To your point, Randy, the benefit of the walkable community, like with Wildwood Barbecue, is those are the businesses that we get a local options tax on. Yes. So we we earn tax revenue for every purchase, <laughs> right? As opposed to you know, no, no offense to the retail outlets, but yeah. it's just the value of their property, which frequently is negotiated based on a certain measure or metric, and mm -hmm. different for every business. So this yeah. is at least more consistent. And if the if the walkable community supports those businesses, we benefit as a town. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Oh, we get a hotel tax and we get a meal tax. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Well, we're at seven. Yeah. Are we have any more discussion on this or should we move on? Any, anything else from the room or the Zoom? The room or the Zoom. Like your silence? I think you do. Okay, that moves us to the next item, discussion for next committee, meeting time and topics. So um, is anyone struggling with the six o'clock? No, no, for me. I'm fine. I actually, I actually texted Andrew, I'm like, oh, oh shit, I'm, I'm leaving now. I'm, I'm not gonna be there in time for five, but I'll be close. <laughs> and, and then as he's typing, I'm like, oh no, this one's at six. I'm like, oh no, I'm fine. Yeah, six is better. Yeah, you can actually go home and eat. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, okay. Yeah, okay. are you okay if we start going yeah. to? Yeah. And if it's too late for Kyle, he can always zoom in. Yeah. Yeah. So I think on, on our next uh, schedule, well, 
I should I, I think my calendar might be messed up, but I have it on the 21st of October. Does that sound right? That's what I have, yeah. Oh, okay. Good. Yeah. I'm going to be out of town that day. Getting ready for Halloween. Me? Uh, visiting my sister in Europe. Oh, oh nice. nice. Where? Uh, Germany and Poland. Oh, nice. Cool. I love the keys. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so the 21st is fine. Okay. With me. Okay. And then agenda items. I know the article is one that we need to put on there. Let's get the article. Uh, follow up on the, uh, the frequently asked questions. We should also put on there review past minutes. Um, I think you're going to see a blast of. I've been sitting for, I apologize, for months. I just haven't gotten to it. And uh, Kayla sent me the first four meetings and I meant to look at them and just look at the formatting to see if it was fine and it is fine so I, I want to get those out between now and the next meeting so we can all review them and come to the next meeting with any edits or yeah so make sure you get us to us at 4 30 on the yeah. 21st yeah no they're they're ready to go now we we just got have her ship them. we got esquire uh, Esquire Dwyer's uh, approval to send them out. Okay. Um, okay. Um, yeah, they don't want to get too far behind in that. She may have others um, ready to go as well. But uh, okay. sounds good. And then, do you think Kyle will be here for the next meeting? Is he supposed to? He said he was. Yeah. Okay. I think so. Or he might be on Zoom, but he said he was, yeah. he was just skipping this one. No, yeah. You know, whatever. Yeah, Wherever be he wants, he's here so we can kind of get some idea of these public sessions we're going to hold because we can sit here and beat stuff to death, but we really need input yeah. more as much as we can get. Oh, yeah. I also wanted to talk about um, how, how we how we will be responding to the hundred or so people who said they wanted to be kept informed of the process in a closer way from the survey. So I'd like to discuss what what that offer really is and how we're going to respond to it. So do we have email addresses? Yes. It was one of the questions on the survey. Okay, so about a hundred of them somewhere around there. So if we have a, a master email list and just say, hey, just keep them posted. Meeting tonight, yeah. meetings on YouTube, you can watch it. Yeah. Next meeting is this, that's all we can do. Right. I mean, I, I think there's more we could do and we should discuss it actually. Yeah. When it's posted. Right. That'll be on the next right. agenda then. Yeah. I mean, for example, in an ideal world, you'd have a web page, but the plan would not even have, we don't even have ours updated to have our terms on, you know, we used to have our terms and then it's gone. Yeah. So All right. I but, think that was when they changed providers or something. We should put that on the next agenda then. Yeah. We can discuss that. How should I phrase that? Uh, I think it was one of the, I think it was one of the most heartening parts of the survey was that there were a hundred people who really wanted to follow this issue and cared about it and were willing to give us their email to do it. How to keep interested townspeople uh, surprised? Yeah, that so that's fine. It sounds good. How to share information on a ongoing basis with interested parties, interested um, any parties is fine. Yeah. As long as the gist is there, that's all that matters. Uh, I also, we didn't talk about this, but I put on here, discuss the executive summary document. We didn't get time to do that, or we didn't have it in time to do that today. Yeah. Any other topics? Should probably keep us busy yeah. you know, for the allotted time. Yes. Yeah. And that's uh, that's another thing. Do we have an allotted? Is it a one hour? And then should we figure out? Are there some like oh next week? Let's do an hour and a half because this is going to be a hot topic. Or 
I, I, mean, I don't know. I do you want to assume an hour? Well, in a in a perfect world, we could assume that, but I think we really just have to come and hope. You know, we we do what we need to do, and however long it takes, if we get to the point where, all right, we're here three hours and we've got ten items left, then we're going to say let's put these off till the next meeting, kind of thing. I'd like to keep one hour as 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 a goal, as an intention, and yeah. if we need longer, take it. Mark, so, I also want to say something that um, I think I think it's good when you chair the meet. I I like your chairing the meeting. I think it's different than Kyle running the meeting. Mm -hmm. You know, I think it's you know there's sections that where Kyle needs to take the lead, but yeah. I think as an overall committee, I personally prefer um, that our chair do it. Ch that our chair chair the meetings because that's the overview for the committee. I don't know how other people feel about that. I think that makes perfect sense, Deb. You know, Kyle is here to offer his expertise and insights and we he's working for us. Mm -hmm. So Mark needs to be able to run the show. So now he can put in for a raise. <laughs> Zero plus zero is <laughs> big number. Actually, I'm in the negative. <laughs> Join the club. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you for taking the notes there. I did my best. Yeah. You want to? You sounded like you were doing a good job. Yeah. I I, I taste like, like a stenographer. Uh, very fast, but not very accurate. As long as you can remember what's going on. Do you want to send that to me and Kayla? That would be great. I just shot you the draft agenda. Oh, great. I don't have Kayla's email. No, I, I can send it to her. It, it, the conservation, but yeah. Okay. Okay. Excellent. Motion to adjourn. Thank you, everyone. I'll second. Second. Uh, roll, call. roll call. Andrew. Aye. Aye. Dunn, aye. Iser, aye. Justin, aye. Levinson. Aye. All right. Thank you. The meeting's adjourned. <laughs>